Let's quickly review intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces will have an effect on both the boiling point of a compound and on its solubility. In terms of boiling point, stronger intermolecular force leads to a higher boiling temperature. In terms of solubility, we have the principle like dissolves like. Which simply means that in order for two substances to be soluble in each other, they must have compatible intermolecular forces. So let's review the intermolecular forces that will be present in organic compounds. Every single atom and molecule in the universe has London dispersion force, or LDF. LDF becomes stronger with increasing polarizability of the electron cloud. Polarizability is just a fancy way of saying an electron cloud can be easily deformed. So let's say you have a molecule. At any given moment in time, the electrons in that molecule are randomly distributed throughout. But they're not static, they're constantly moving. This means at one moment in time, you can have more electron density built up on one side of the molecule or the other. This results in a small amount of negative charge on the side of the molecule that has more electron density and a small amount of positive charge on the side of the molecule that has less electron density. And we call this phenomenon a transient dipole. Transient because it is not permanent. When this transient dipole is in close contact with another molecule that has random electron distribution, electron-electron repulsion can cause the electrons in the next molecule to become unevenly distributed as well. So proximity of the transient dipole to the second molecule creates an induced dipole that again has partial positive charge on the left and partial negative charge on the right. And since opposite charges attract, we get a small amount of attractive force between those two molecules and this is called London dispersion force. Generally speaking, pound for pound, London dispersion force is the weakest of all intermolecular forces. However, it can become significant at high molecular weight. Because these small amounts of charge separation are transient, that is, they have very short lifetimes and there is no permanent charge separation, London dispersion force is what we call hydrophobic. That gets to the like dissolves like idea. If you're asking yourself how to determine which molecule has stronger LDF, well, comparing this molecule, which is a four carbon chain, with this molecule, which is a three carbon chain, the one with the higher molecular weight has a stronger LDF. That means that the compound on the left will have a higher melting and boiling point. What about comparing these two compounds? This is the same one that we had originally, the fourth carbon chain. This one is a three carbon chain with an extra carbon stuck on the middle. Actually, both of these have the exact same chemical formula. C4H10. So we can't go by molecular weight. 
Actually, what we have to think about is surface area. If we bring the straight chain compound in contact with another of its kind, they can have a whole lot more surface area in contact. And really, the whole side of the molecule can be interacting with the whole side of the other molecule. Lots of surface area. That means a strong LDF If we bring the second compound in contact with another molecule of itself, no matter how they're arranged, there's going to be significantly less surface area in contact. So this one will have lower SA and therefore weaker LDF. You'd expect the compound on the left to have a higher melting point and boiling point. Dipole-dipole is a stronger type of interaction than LDF, uh, for comparable molecular weights, low molecular weights. Dipole-dipole requires two polar molecules. Here's a molecule of acetone that has a CO bond, is very polar, and so we have a partial positive charge on the carbon and a partial negative charge on the oxygen. Bring one acetone molecule in proximity with another, and the positive end of one will be attracted to the negative end of the other. And that dashed line represents a dipole-dipole interaction. Because there is permanent charge separation here, this is considered a hydrophilic intermolecular force. This means that acetone and other polar molecules are soluble in water. Hydrogen bonding is a special case of dipole-dipole. And it requires that the atom or the molecule must contain X bonded to H where X is one of either fluorine, uh, nitrogen, or oxygen. Because fluorine, nitrogen, and oxygen have such high electronegativity, three of the highest in the periodic table, and they're also very small and not polarizable, you end up with a very polar bond where the X atom has a large amount of delta negative and the H atom has a large amount of delta positive. Here's a water molecule. It has two OH bonds. So the water has a delta negative, sorry, the oxygen has a delta negative and the hydrogen has a delta positive. This can hydrogen bond with other molecules that contain the XH or other molecules that don't contain XH. For instance, here we have water hydrogen bonding with acetone. Now acetone is capable of being a hydrogen bond acceptor, but not a donor. Water is capable of being both a donor and an acceptor. In this case, the water is acting as the donor. And because we have permanent charge separation, uh, with the X always being negative and the H always being positive, this is a hydrophilic intermolecular force. Now, in pure water, water molecules hydrogen bond with other water molecules. In pure acetone, you don't have hydrogen bonding you just have dipole-dipole interactions. Therefore, you would expect water to have a higher melting and boiling point than acetone does. The molecule ethanol, CH3CH2OH, 
is very soluble in water as well. What type of intermolecular interaction do we have showing up here? Well, we have a hydrogen bond because there's a delta plus on the ethanol hydrogen, a delta minus on the ethanol oxygen, delta minus on the water oxygen, and delta pluses on the water hydrogens. Here's another ethanol molecule. So, the original eth ethanol molecule is acting as a hydrogen bond donor, and water is acting as its acceptor. But with the hydrogen on the right, water is acting as the hydrogen bond donor, and ethanol is acting as the acceptor. Hence, ethanol and water are very soluble in each other. And this might be a snapshot of the interactions you see in vodka, which is essentially a 60-40 mixture of water and ethanol. Now, water has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. Ethanol has a boiling point of 78.4 degrees Celsius. Can you explain this difference in boiling points? based on intermolecular force? Pause your video and give it a try. So, here's the explanation. We know that water has a stronger intermolecular force. simply based on the observation that water has a higher boiling point. Both are capable of participating in hydrogen bonding. Why does water have a higher boiling point than ethanol? The answer is, both of the hydrogens in water are capable of acting as donors, and the oxygen is capable of acting as an acceptor. That means that Water has two donor sites and one acceptor site. Ethanol, on the other hand, the oxygen is an acceptor and the OH hydrogen is a donor, but there is no other donor site. This bond is between oxygen and carbon. It's not between oxygen and hydrogen. Hence, this is not a donor. Basically, water is capable of participating in more hydrogen bonds than ethanol is. Hence, it has stronger intermolecular forces and a higher boiling point. Detergent molecules take advantage of the principle like dissolves like to solubilize grease in water. They contain a hydrophobic tail, which is a nonpolar portion, only capable of using London dispersion force, and a hydrophilic head, hydrophilic because it's got charge separation. When you mix detergent with water, the detergent molecules, their hydrophobic tails, interact with oil molecules, and the polar group, that is the hydrophilic region, faces the outside. So this little micelle now is soluble in water. Just because the surface is hydrophilic. 